Today, I'm at Pindari Wines in the western ridge of South Australia's Barossa Valley. I'm here to see Wendy and Tony, who grow grapes, make beautiful wines with those grapes, and also run sheep, all with a very sustainable farming practice. So let's go learn more. Wendy, what a beautiful property you've got here. Tell us a little bit about Pindari and what you guys do. Well, we're um, a mixed farm. We're on about uh, 285 hectares of land in the Barossa. And we've got, we run about 700 uh, Merino ewes, and then we've got about 36, 38 hectares of vineyard. And this is our oldest Shiraz block right here, which is quite woolly and vigorous this year <laughs> because we've had great spring rains. It's been a great season so far, which is wonderful because we've had really tough seasons for three, four years. It looks really healthy. Yeah, it's it is. We're trying to actually happy. slow them down, so <laughs> we're trying to pull them up and stop yeah. them growing. Tony, what a beautiful office. Tell us a little bit about how you guys ended up here and, and growing grapes and raising sheep. Uh, I'm actually sixth generation South Australian on the land. My grandfather purchased it in 1957, and when I moved up here in 19... 90, the property was basically unviable. We had to change. As it turned out, we were just in the Barossa GI, grape growing region, by about a kilometre. So vineyards was the obvious way to go. And you also do sheep. That's what's something you're really uh, passionate about and you know a lot about, it's the sheep. Yes, my background's sheep. So I still run a small sheep flock here with about 700 ewes and yeah, I enjoy the sheep part of it very much, even though it's a minor part of our whole business now. But it's also always good in this game to be diversified. And you're the viticulturist, so you take care of all the vines yes. and make sure they're, yes. they're working. Yep. The mid-row, we don't cultivate, so we're all about sustainability. We're registered with Sustainable Growers of Australia. So in winter, all of our sheep come and graze in here. So we've been doing That's that cool. for about 15 years. And we just slash off and let it die off naturally. So we're minimising inputs into the vineyard. We're just starting to do a little skirt or a trim with these shoots and then the bunches are pretty much, everything's flowered and set, so now it's just time and wait yeah, to manage the water and irrigation. All right, so today, Sarah, I'm gonna throw an old school classic back into the mix, a dish that people can cook at home. Quick and simple one, it's one of my favorites, it's a crumb lamb cutlet, what do you reckon? Yum, yeah. I love lamb. I love that. <laughs> it's, it's such a simple dish, it's, a classic old favourite from my family. I've got a few mates who absolutely love it. So the first thing we need to do is make our tomato sauce. Yep. So what I've can just, I do? Well, you can be the cook, the, the stir. I'll do all the prep <laughs> okay, work. <done. laughs> it's easy. So I'm just going to dice up a couple of onions. I'll give you a bit of extra virgin olive oil Thank to chuck you. into our pot first of all. So we're just going to sweat off our onions to start with. We're not going to add too much colour. We just mm. want them to be the base of our sauce. A little so, bit more of that sweetness. And that sweetness is what's going to cut through the fattiness of those fried lamb cutlets. Yeah. So is this what you got for Sunday lunch? Well, we, we got a version of this. It wasn't with the cutlets. It was with like a, a mid-chop or a loin chop. But yeah, and we didn't have panko breadcrumbs. We kind of had the, uh, this the standard bulk Homemade. standard breadcrumbs. Yeah. We've kind of fancied up mum's recipe. I know. And it kind of just simplifies it a little bit, yeah. I guess. And I reckon the sauce came out of a jar with mum's <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mum. Um, <laughs> Your mum sounds like my mum. Giving away secrets. <laughs> So we just roughly chop our garlic so they're about half the size of the onion. And that can go in there as well. And then just a couple of things into our pot. A little bit of salt to start bringing out some of sweetness in those onions. That looks great, Sarah. I'm just going to grab some chilli flakes to chuck in. Just a pinch of chilli flakes. If you don't like it hot, leave it out. But I think the crumb cutlets need a little bit of spice to help cut through the richness of them. Just okay. once the onion softens a little bit and loses that fully white colour, it starts going a little bit transparent. That's the time I like to add in my tomato. And we can also go in with a little bit of brown sugar now too, okay. which is going to add that little bit of sweetness you'd expect in something like a ketchup, but we're not going to go anywhere near as much as you would in a ketchup. We've only got one teaspoon there just to add a little bit of sweetness. While you do that, I reckon I'll start getting the stuff ready to crumb our cutlets. Yeah. Whenever I crumb anything, I set up a, a pan station or a crumbing station. You need three things. You need flour, which gives the egg something to stick to. You need the egg, which then gives 
the breadcrumbs don't stick to. Nice. So it's a pretty simple setup. What I like to do is then flavour some of these elements. So I'll flavour the flour and also flavour the breadcrumbs. It's kind of a fun thing to do with the kids. Oh, it is a perfect one to do with the kids. Get them doing the crumbing. You can keep your fingers clean as well. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so salt and pepper into our flour, so that'll season our lamb. We're going to chuck a little bit of salt into our breadcrumbs as well. And then a couple of other ingredients. So the chilli flakes will go back in there. Amazing. Some of that parmesan cheese. You want to grate a little bit of that into sure. our cutler mix as well. And I think that's a really important thing because you should season every element that you're using. Totally. We can now add our capers into our sauce. Okay. Probably half a jar. I really like capers. If you didn't like them as much, you could leave sort of them out where you could use a little bit less. But I reckon let's put a heap of them in there yeah. and make it really nice and it's... briny and that sort of piquancy that the, uh, the capers give. And that little pop of flavour as you bite into it. Yeah. Now, we're going to add a little bit of thyme into our crumb as well. So thyme leaves work really well because they're quite um, quite a firm herb and they mm. take out a fair bit of cooking. So all I'm going to do, hold my thyme, strip the leaves off the stalk and then just break the leaves up to go into our breadcrumb mixture. So that is our, our crumb seasoned up and you can see there there's nice flecks of chilli and thyme and the parmesan through them. So that's going to add that really nice flavour to our cutlets and that's something that mum didn't do. So <laughs> she would just crumb them with breadcrumbs. We just jazzed it up a little bit. Yeah. Mum's still delicious. Mum would watch this. So. <laughs> um, so now I've got these beautiful lamb cutlets. These are already French, so Coles have done the hard work for us, yeah. which is great. <laughs> um, if they weren't French, you don't have to French them, but I think if you're going to serve them as a canapé, it's nice to trim that little bit of meat yeah. and sinew off the bone because it's easy to pick up like that. Yeah, but exactly. you don't have to. All right, so crumbing, it's pretty simple. I try and keep a wet and a dry hand. They're, they're, yeah. I, I, I say I try because I'll probably be covered in flour and breadcrumbs shortly. <laughs> But I have a wet hand, which will be my left hand, and my right hand is my dry hand. So you just want to make sure that you're not touching any dry ingredients with your wet hand and vice versa with your dry hand. So just like that. And I always give it a good press so that we get those breadcrumbs to really stick to the cutlets. Amazing. It's extra bit of crunch. There you go. Crumb cutlet. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> so, Sarah, if you want to put them Go into the pan, it. just in a little bit of oil, we're just going to fry them to nice and crispy on the outside and golden, and we want to keep that nice pink in the middle. So, looking for a medium, even medium rare cook on them. Yeah. All and right. I love these little tips of having the French bone. I mean, it just simplifies it for you at home. Exactly. Everyone's busy, so yeah. make it easy. Sauce is pretty much ready. We should add one more thing. Just a dash of balsamic vinegar. Yeah. Just add right. that little bit of brightness and some sharpness. You can use whatever vinegar you've got. Apple cider would work well, red wine as well. But a little bit of balsamic is nice and sweet. And then just a quick twist of salt over our cutlets when they come out of the pan. It's plate up time. Amazing, go for it. I would just chuck them on a nice platter. You want the, the bones sticking out so you can pick them up nice and easily. And then that's our dish done. That's we'll amazing. A little bowl of our sauce. Yeah. Now you can either serve this sauce cooled down or you can serve it warm straight out of the pot like that. I don't think it really matters. Sarah, they look absolutely perfect. I can't wait to dig in. Guys, you have to try these at home. An Aussie classic, just jazzed up a little bit by Sarah and I. Give it a go. For these recipes and loads of others, check out farmtofork.com.au. Follow us on social media and we'll see you guys very soon.